In this next series of videos, we're going to discuss the patterning and hatching tools. Before we get started, I want to cover a little basic information first. Now, MicroStation provides two basic methods of adding hatching or patterns to drawings. First is with line elements, which is simple hatching achieved by applying either single line hatching or double line cross hatching elements to a defined area, or by cells where patterning is achieved by applying a pattern cell to a defined area. The terms hatch and pattern are essentially interchangeable, although patterning is the official microstation term. In these videos, I will generally use hatch to describe line patterns and pattern to describe patterning with a cell. Now, the samples you see on the screen right now are typical. The first sample is a single line hatch. Second sample is a cross hatch. And the third sample is a cell pattern. And each of the three are generated with different hatching or patterning tools. And of course, we're going to look at them in great detail. For a hatch or a pattern to be successfully applied, there are two statements that I can make. Ideally, the geometry of the drawing elements should be as accurate as possible. Accuracy in this case means having the vertices of the enclosing elements connected. Nothing will stop the patterning process faster than a gap between enclosing elements. Hatches and patterns tend to leak out of gaps in the geometry into the surrounding areas. And for most of the hatching or patterning tools, MicroStation requires that there be closed elements present before a pattern can take place. This is particularly so if the pattern is to be associative, where the pattern is bound to the closed element which surrounds it. And depending on the method used, you may need to create closed elements before starting the patterning or hatching process. This is why the information we covered in the previous videos on closed shapes becomes very important. Let's take a very quick look at the tools that we're going to use. Go across to the hatching toolbox, and I'm going to float this as an open toolbox. Again, to make life easier. First tool is the hatch area. And as you can see, we can apply spacings and angles. It can be associative, it can be snappable. And if we are using the flood method, as we did in previous videos, we can identify areas within the pattern area. We can also do Boolean operations as well. Take a look at the cross hatching tool, almost identical, except we have two sets of information. And thirdly, take a look at the pattern area tool, which is where you apply a cell as a pattern. More information about the cell, plus the same information. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. We'll get to those in detail in the following videos. There are also a couple of side notes that you need to be aware of. The first is that hatches and cross hatches are placed as graphic groups. Now this allows you to manipulate the hatch as individual lines if the graphic group lock is off, or if the graphic group lock is on, the hatch can be manipulated as a group. And of course, the graphic group lock is on the locks pop-up. This is this one. We shan't turn it on yet. However, if you wish to manipulate the hatch as a graphic group, then you must be a little careful in the tools that you actually use. You have to use the tools on the main toolbox. Any of the tools here or in this tool frame can be used. What you cannot do is use keyboard inputs, such as the delete key, for example, or the tools which you pop up by right clicking on the screen. These tools cannot be used on a graphic group. So just keep that in mind because you'd be quite disappointed if you want to manipulate a hatch and suddenly discover that it won't work. And the second thing of note, when dealing with tight enclosed spaces, I've zoomed in to this L-shaped enclosure. You have to be a little careful about how you display the area to be hatched. For example, this L-shaped piece here, ideally, you should be able to see the entire L shape as I've done now. Sometimes, depending on circumstances, if you zoom in to a small area like this and cannot see all of the area, sometimes the hatch won't happen and you'll get an error message. Try it this way. 
first if you need to zoom in very close. But don't be surprised if you do get an error message and you need to zoom out completely so the entire enclosure is available. That's all for the moment. I'll add any other important information or warnings as we go through the various exercises.